while I wait for the box glue to set, which will take ages, I thought I would talk a little bit about battery management systems and what my plan is and some of the issues and questions and so on. I do, if you haven't already, I do recommend that you look at uh, MJ Lawton has a video on BMSs and uh, Jehu Garcia also talks about BMSs and the circumstances in which you can choose not to use a BMS and instead you might just choose to monitor your batteries rather than manage your batteries and that's what he does with his electric samba vehicle. So I will go through some of the BMSs that I've played with. As a background, my experience is I've been playing with electric bikes for several years. I work one day a week at a local electric bike designer called EV Lab here in Wellington. So I've seen lots of electric bikes, good BMS is not so good, and I've got a bit of a feel for the various options. So I'll just run through what I've got sitting in front of the in front of us here. This tiny wee thing here, which is what I had plugged into my into my two kilowatt battery, which is right under us. There it is there. Um, it, all it does is measure the voltage of each cell, tells you the high, the low, the difference between the highs and the lows, and beeps annoyingly loudly if the voltage gets too low on any of the particular groups. So if, you, if you're going to just not bother with a, a battery management system, you can just use one of these and at least it will warn you if things are going sour uh, in terms of under voltage. Um, it won't tell you about over voltage. But those are quite cool if you've got nothing else um, to fall back on. This is a tiny little one that I got from some electric bike. It will cope with up to 13 cells in series and I imagine that that is a really, it's so small, I imagine it's probably good for a maximum of 5 amps maybe. This is another one that I bought off AliExpress or you can get the same thing on eBay I'm sure and once again it's probably good for, oh it's a 4S BMS so it can cope with 4 cells, manage 4 cells in series and that's probably about 5 amps worth of control that that can cope with. This one here is another AliExpress one that I bought and it I think can cope with up to 10 amps uh, this one is yet another AliExpress one I bought. I'll put links down below to all of these so you can have a look at the listing and see if you want to buy one or not. Um, so this one has a heatsink which is encouraging and it's got five um, MOSFETs which is good. There's room there for another two, so the people who make this will also be able to make a, a version that can cope with even more current. And this one is also one where it can the the basic board can be um, have all the components to cope with up to th uh, 13s battery pack, but in this case it's only got the components to cope with a 7S which is what mostly what I'm dealing with which is just a little bit over 24 volts. So that one can probably cope with about 20 amps. Um, this is yet another AliExpress from a different seller and this is purportedly rated at 30 amps and it can cope with up to a spike up to 60 amps and eh, maybe we'll see and that's the 70s that's probably the one that I will use for this this battery pack some other ones that I pulled out of it e-bikes 
Um, this is a, looks like a 12 S maybe, um, but this is for pouch cells. So instead of um, our beloved 18650s, this one will be designed for pouch cells like this that I pulled out of a laptop. And here's a few other from my e-bike days. This is one where the either it got water in it probably and it blew something went terribly wrong there. Um, this is quite a nice one because it has LEDs that light up when you're when you're charging it. When each of the groups reaches the 4.2 volts an LED lights up so it's really easy to see ah, um, all these if you see that one never lights up you know that one of your um, groups in the pack is bad and you can replace it and then, then here's another one well this is from a company called um, Signal Lab um, who do a reasonable job and this again has LEDs to tell you when all of the cells are fully charged um, which is a nice bit of feedback and it's got a nice grunty heatsink um, so that one I think again is a no oh, that's a 16S but it's for 16 of these in series um, so you can't use this with um, 18650s because these have a maximum voltage of, uh, is it 3.3 or 3.7? I forget, whatever it is. Um, as opposed to these which have 4.2 volts maximum. But apart from that, these are quite nice. All of these cheap Chinese ones come out of the e-bike scene. So they are usually designed to cope with 20 or 30 amps. If you have a an inverter that wants to take more than that, then it becomes slightly difficult because there aren't as many BMSs designed for more than 30 amps unless you jump up to the electric vehicle BMSs and they are designed to cope with sort of 200 amps, 300, 400 amps, which is usually way more than you actually need in a in a Powerwall situation where you might be going 60 amps, maybe 80. Where the Powerwall, do-it-yourself Powerwall crowd are in a in a kind of a no man's land between e-bike BMSs and electric car BMSs. There is quite a nice solar charge controller and BMS combined unit available from a, a website called electrodacus.com which is uh, worth having a look at. I expect that in the next few years the Chinese manufacturers will leap onto the Powerwall market and start designing BMSs for that Powerwall market few other things that it's worth noting is um, the gruntier e-bike BMSs tend to be for higher voltages. This is probably a 48 volt BMS or it might even be 72. Uh, can't remember off the top of my head. It's a S12, 12 in series by the looks, or is it? Maybe it's 10. Um, so it's probably 48 volts. So the the one of the questions that you might address when you start your your Powerwall design project is: Do you go for 24 volts or do you go for 48? And the benefit of going for 48 is that uh, your current will generally be lower for the same size of inverter. At the moment I'm designing a 24 volt pack because the previous one I built, the 1 kilowatt pack, was also 24 and my intention is that once I've finished this one I'll start again and build another 
24 volt pack and then I'll have the chance to either put those in parallel and have 4 kilowatts at 24 volts or I might go I might put these in series and have a, a brand new 48 volt pack but that then requires me to buy a new charge controller and a new inverter that can cope with 48 volts so yeah, uh, for the moment I'm sticking with 24 volts but I'm sort of getting to the to the upper boundary of cheap BMSs for a 24 volt system well one other thing that is worth talking about is with a electric bike what you're really wanting to do is have the maximum power for it, the minimum weight and so you want to charge your batteries as high as put the maximum charge into your batteries as possible so that you've got the maximum power and the maximum range on your bike with a power wall situation like this where we're using recycled batteries it makes more sense to think about undercharging your battery pack and also not running it too flat so in, a, in an e-bike scenario you charge it up to 4.2 volts which is 100% capacity and then you go for your long ride and you've got your uh, maximum power when you start off and it's all good but the drawback of, of that charging scenario charging it to the full 4.2 volts is that you'll get less charge cycles out of a particular battery pack if you want to go for longevity, which I'm assuming that I will want to with my power wall, I want it to last as many years as I can, then it, it's better with lithium to charge it only to 4.1 or even just 4 volts, which is about 80% of its capacity, and then only discharge it down to, say, 40%, so that the battery is never stressed when it's being charged and is never stressed when it's being just discharged it's just humming along in that middle ground between 40 and 80 percent and that way you get the maximum number of charge cycles with my pack i'm going to be solar charging it so theoretically it'll be charging every day and discharging every night with my house load. So that's something to keep in mind when you are thinking about BMSs because if you're never overstressing the battery, so if you're telling your charger to, to only go up to 4 volts and you're um, telling your inverter to cut out at say 3 volts then your BMS is, is never particularly stressed the it should never have to, to utilise its cutout functions so the current carrying capacity becomes less important you're more interested in just its ability to balance between groups you're not, you're not so interested in the BMS's ability to cut off when it overcharges or disconnect when um, the batteries are getting too low so you, I can th theoretically cope um, get away with using a underpowered BMS on a big huge pack if it's always being undercharged and never getting close to being fully discharged. That's the theory anyway, um, we will see how that works in practice. <laughs>